Hello, uh, I'm Ari, uh, uh, your host at Episteme Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs and tech, tar tech startups that will change our lives. Uh, before we, I present our VIP guest, I will present you uh, my co-host uh, here is uh, Harold Knoll. Um, Hello. <laughs> Hello, Harold. Harold is a SciTech, furious and curious founder, CEO of Dayu, a longevity startup that ambition to tokenize, tokenize our genes. He's also partner at Ava Capital, a dynamic uh, business angel fund based in France. Um, I'm right? Perfect, okay. as always. <laughs> So today, uh, our guest is uh, Farhad uh, Alexandre Mohamadi, founder CEO of uh, Mamazen, a dynamic startup studio founded in two 2017, based in Turin, Italy. Uh, nice to have you, Farhad. How are you today? Doing fine, doing fine. Nice to meet you guys. Happy to be here. Great, great. It's a pleasure to have you. So, uh, Farhad, before we, we start talking about Mamazen uh, specifically, Uh, maybe you could talk about your background uh, because we uh, we read on your LinkedIn that you're a mechanical engineer, but we we also watch your TEDx, and we know that you not work at a lot uh, in research and development, so uh, mainly in marketing. And so, could you little bit explain your 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 path? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Thank you, guys. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm. I mean, my my uh, background is. Uh, I, I'm an engineer, as you said, but I never practiced as an engineer. So, uh, is I mean, most of my time I spend it on sales, marketing, and startups. It's like 14 years that I'm working in this field. Um, I've been the sales director of Back.it, which was pretty much a copycat of Craigslist.org. I don't know if you know the website. It's online classifieds like uh, Gumtree or so on, mm -hmm. or Shipstead. And then I worked in Glamour as a commercial director until the exit to Italian Yellow Pages. And uh, Glamour was a copycat of Groupon, and we managed to sell it after one year and a half to Italian Yellow Pages for a fair deal, let's say. And uh, after that, I opened up a startup in the last mile delivery. Mm. A long time before it was trendy. <laughs> and um, we managed to reach, with very small funding actually, because we received like, in the whole life of the startup, we received 750K in funding through more than one round. And we, managed to reach six million in revenues on the fifth year and then we sold it to 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 a bigger, co bigger company um and that's it then i decided to open up a startup studio great great uh, um so you, you were an entrepreneur just before launching the startup studio itself right yep okay. exactly uh, maybe before before we talk about uh, that uh, Uh, how the idea of uh, committing into the delivery uh, uh, emerged in your mind? <laughs> well, actually, you know, I joined, I mean, we decided to fund a company because I known these two guys. Actually, it was really random. I met these two guys because they, they, they were doing just urban bike messenger, like, like there's in London, like there's in, in, uh, in US, New York, there was also this, this movie, I don't know if you know, Breakless. Uh, about urban bike messengers. So we met uh, because I had to deliver a package to my accountant and it was super late. So there was no possibility to rely on kind of normal, let's say um, delivery uh, delivery service. So I just was looking for something quick and I searched on Google and I found these two guys were doing by bicycle. Mm. I said, well, nice, maybe they can do it. So I called them and says, yes, we can deliver in 10 minutes as well. That's amazing. So they delivered it actually. And I was pretty surprised because I was definitely, I mean, I was definitely not sure that they will do it, but they <laughs> did it. And um, nothing after that, I said, hey, we can industrialize this. I can help you out with this. He said, we, we don't have any money. He says, no, I, I will do it happily as a co-founder. <laughs> and so I, left i was doing some consultancy at that moment and i left everything and we found a company in, which so i was the, the co-founder let me resume you you 
gave your very important uh, file to, to an unknown guy to deliver it with bicycle to your accountant. And then you just yeah. founded the company with two guys you don't know. <laughs> you didn't know that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it took a little bit more. To, I mean, we, we just, you know, started to have some some meeting uh, because, you know, before before committing my time with no money, uh, I, I want to know a little bit more, but I liked uh, the service. I mean, I said, well, the execution, at, at least in terms of time, works. We can in, we can disrupt the delivery business. Let's try it. <laughs> and we messed up pretty much everything, but we still <laughs> succeed. <laughs> Bravo, it's, uh, it's amazing. So Maybe you done it in, in all Italy? Uh, yeah, we were in all Italy. We were the, um, we were delivering. Um, exclu- I mean, just it was relying only on us. Uh, in Milan, we were delivering for Amazon Prime. Now, we were delivering also for many other brands. So it was pretty, pretty fun. Quick, we scale up pretty quickly, and uh, but it was su- super, super hard. I mean, we messed up pretty much everything, <laughs> investment contracts, everything. I mean. We did it all wrong. Mm. <laughs> and they, they let you enter in the company like uh, with equ- equivalent share between among you or? There was not, not a company. They were just, you know, delivery guys. Ah, so okay. there was not an idea to be to become a scalable company. We met, they were just, you know, doing delivery as a lifestyle, lifestyle business like they did in New York. But I thought that could be something like, no, I, I had less shares than than. And then, okay. and then, okay, cool. Interesting. So you sold uh, the company to a bigger, co- to a big, big corporation. Yeah, CGR, the uh, CGR SPA, which was uh, the majority of of this company, was held by a private equity firm, which is uh, BC Partners, which is pretty pretty famous. Okay. And then uh, maybe I you, you would like to ask uh, Farad about uh, the next step because uh, yes, of course. Uh, oh, yes, what about the startup studio? Where it comes to you that uh, uh, yeah, h- how is the seed of creating the startups image in your mind? The, the startup studio. Well, um, because you could pursue a career with a uh, with a uh, with a uh, with everyone or uh, as a mechanical engineer. So how you how you end up well, like this? <laughs> well, actually, you know, the studio, um, I, I don't know. I never, I never thought of making a career as an engineer. I, I always loved marketing, but my father pretty much forced me into, into do, doing this. And, but the, when I was studying, I was al- already studying marketing during my mechanical, um, uh, during the degree, I was already, you know, studying during the university because I, I was really in love with marketing, negotiation, sales, and all of these things was was pretty much interesting for me. Uh, actually, the idea of the studio came out pretty out of one of my fear, I think, because it's when I had this consultancy, firm, very small one, uh, we were doing, um, I was afraid of losing uh, valuable people that were going to open new companies, maybe quitting our company and then going to open up their own. So I thought, well, if I can help them Mm. setting up their own company, I can have a slice of it and we can give them commercial um, uh, services as um, in revenue sharing. Plus giving them, you know, what they need to start, like, I don't know, website and all of this kind of thing. But then, you know, I started Pony Zero and this idea in, uh, evolved pretty much. The first time I had this idea was 2011. And then, you know, suddenly changed, became something like an operative accelerator. Then, I don't know, helping investor file, do the right thing, helping co-founder become a co-founder as a service something like that and change mm. till uh, we exited the point zero. And I found out that uh, a friend of mine was coming back from London and I was telling him about this idea that I wanted to do after exiting point zero. And he told me, this is a studio. <laughs> so I found out that 
was already there. Yeah. <laughs> it was not nothing new. We were not <laughs> aware that this model was something that exists, that was something different than the incubator. So you just, you know, you just follow on your, your idea to, to help start uppers and, and, and then someone take, you are doing a startup studio, right? <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yes, because he because exactly. helped two entrepreneurs in delivery, delivery service, it works. <laughs> so it's, why, why, not, why not industrialize the process, right? Mm -hmm. Like helping other entrepreneurs in different areas and, uh, and do the same. It was, it was the, the idea. Yeah, you know, it's it's just came out, you know, it started before, before also helping them because I met them in 2013. But then, you know, uh, the first time you know, I thought, oh, I want to start, I want to be a co-founder of mm. more than one. I can industrialize this process, I thought, um, before realizing how hard it was, how hard it was, <laughs> because it's super hard. <laughs> and uh, then I found out that it's better to come out with internal ideas. And then I changed them all li little by little. But um, yeah. Actually, it started, you know, about uh, being afraid of losing valuable people because mm -hmm. I really believe that a company is based on people. Absolutely. Um, so uh, now Amazon is a, so a startup studio. Uh, you have uh, a business model, but also an innovation model. As you said, you have internal idea. Of, uh, you work on internal idea. Uh, could you talk about your innovation model from, uh, you know, uh, how you work on the idea, how then you, you, you build it, you test it, and maybe you call out uh, co-founders or how, how does it work? Well, um, also this came after a lot of mistakes as everything, because first we thought that we can help co-founders, but, you know, we have a fair track record, I would say. We don't have, you know, an amazing track record. We didn't, I don't know, build a unicorn before or something like that. Um, so um, I think that working with co-founders on external ideas require um, a higher experience and a more structured model. I mean, you have to be very, very good to do this. So after trying to work on both models so um external ideas and internal ideas we found out that it's better for us you know to have everything all the value chain in control and then start to do other things like also you can do you know venture building by helping corporates mm -hmm. but this is Another story, it's Absolutely. completely different. <laughs> and so, okay, how does our model work? Works? Um, well, we start, um, well, first we are focused on uh, a specific market. And um, what we do, we do, we analyze market needs every year and we come out after we know where to, you know, where are the pains, where are the needs. So we found, uh, after founding, you know, some areas to, to focus on. Then what we do is to come up with like 50 to 60 ideas to fill out those needs, usually by a, uh, an idea generation process, brainstorming, you know, looking also outside, outside um, of Europe to find out if there is any specific ideas that we can uh, take ideas from, or if those needs are already filled up by in, but in a different way, and so on. Then we go through uh, like um, scoring to define which idea fits the best, like uh, in terms of the market dimension, so total addressable market. Um, which is the best idea that we can? Uh, that we can achieve, like, are are we the best team to do this, or is someone else better fitted for this? So, um, can we easily find clients for this idea? So we have like some parameters mm -hmm. that we have to put the check on before going going further. And, it and be in so, any market, uh, which market? In any area, uh, it could be anything. 
Um, no, we uh, we focus on uh, we just build digital startups in B two B for and the kind of clients that we love small clients, mm. small and micro businesses in terms of target. Why why that? Because for Europe and especially South Europe, it's super. Um, I mean it majority of business are small businesses, 99% are SMEs. But if you look at the vast majority are micro businesses and they're accountable for about 50% of the GDP. Absolutely. So it's it's super good market and it's very fragmented. And if you manage to cover all Europe and it, this means that you have a very successful startups, then you can move to Latin, Latin America which has pretty similar environment and one language. So it's really good, a good market to focus on. They have pretty much same problems like uh, <clears throat> um, having clients, uh, you know, uh, cash, cash flow, retaining clients and process problems. So mainly what we try to do is to take what big companies do put it on a platform, make a one product fits it all and use the digital platform to deliver it. Mm -hmm. So it's more like, you know, uh, not really uh, deep tech or I don't know, very, um, it's more delivering value in a new way uh, and new services to clients that usually don't have access to this kind of service. So this is what we do. So we are, agnostic in terms of like for for example right now we are building a fintech and last year we built a prop tech mm. but still small clients all the same problem <laughs> like this fintech is focusing on uh it, it's still not out there but we are focusing on <clears throat> uh helping them manage their cash cash flow better and instead the prop tech was helping real estate agents get more leads. So to better understand uh, how you cook around the, 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 the emerging idea, uh, do you uh, who are your team right now? Do you have, I mean, uh, you should have a very strong insider team. Uh, are, are there more uh, UX designer, customer de develop, the development or customer discovery designers or more marketers? What are the profile? Okay, uh, we are just six people, mm -hmm. okay. If you imagine, let's say, Idea Lab that built around five startups per year, and they're very successful because they build 150 startups and they have 35 IPOs and 12 <clears throat> exits, pretty successful exit. There are just 25 people. So we are six people at the moment. We are, and mainly we have marketers, product, and data analysis. So what we mainly do is um, <clears throat> just uh, we look for unmet needs in the market. I don't know if you know the, the book, Write It from Alberto it. Savoia. I write, uh, I write a French article. I li literally translated uh, the whole book in French. <laughs> and I said to Alberto, please tell your publisher to don't sue me for that. <laughs> <laughs> I literally trusted cover to cover the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is what uh, we we do mainly. So we we work with that this kind of pattern. To so we only work with data. We we do not just come up with ideas. So for us, is market. Then we test. Mm -hmm. Once we have clients, then we build an MVP. And the way we build an MVP, it's no code. So we use Bubble.io, Integromat, Zapier, and all this kind of stuff, Airtable, and so on, because we want to have quick method to test, fail, retest, fail, and finally come <laughs> get get a good result. So before saying to your to internally, so you have now something that is ready to become a startup you have strong validated desirability data. The desirability has been proved for you, right? Exactly. Okay. Usually we, we consider, uh, we have like gatekeepers. Mm -hmm. So gatekeeper for us 
do we have clients? If the answer is yes, so is we have, for example, the, the prop tech, we, we, after many testing, we tried to go on a sale. We uh, contact 20 real estate agents and we sold 12 contracts, which was, which was definitely above what we expected. Mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, we should be the platform. We so, said, okay, we are going to deliver after three months. You pre-sale you pre the idea, the concept? before having it really or, or you are you we pre-sale we pre-sale the, the service okay we want to be sure that they commit that they have skin in the game it's a real and fake it until you make it uh it's really you know we we usually to do some tests like for example in this case we made some tests to see if we were able to deliver that service before selling it after we sold our customer acquisition cost to give them what they want, and we tested and we saw how much they were ready to pay, yeah. then we said, okay, we can start. So we sold the service. We said, okay, we have it. Do you want to buy it? Okay, we said, okay, we will deliver in one month in your city, two months in your city, mm -hmm. something like that. And then we start to deliver. But the first time we were delivering, we were just sending mails. Here are the leads that you paid for. <laughs> awesome. Uh, this, this, this approach is, is, uh, is wonderful and bold and I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and because we were all, you know, in the position to, to you know, be in other life to, to, be, to be entrepreneur and, you know, to writing um, business plan, a 50 page business plan, you know, I did it. I did it uh, 20 years ago and, you know, <laughs> so I know that it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i mean you should write a bit i mean it's it's a good exercise i think to see if you can plan properly but you know once you have data like okay i know that and i have it because i have my own data that tells me that if i reach to i don't know 100 real estate agents 40 percent of them we will will buy this product then you know, from that to a business plan, you know, I mean, it's true. Absolutely. It's true. At least you have, so, I mean, when you go to investors, it says, yes, listen, I proved it. Of course. It's a totally different metric from, yeah, I think that, or yeah. there is this data report that tells that real estate agents really needs this. Yes, but at what price? how you will deliver it and so on. Absolutely. Um, so you talked, you, yeah, you talked about uh, funding and investors. So how it works with you, what is your relation with investors? The, do you have your own network of investors already? Are you looking for more? Did they invest directly in the startup studio or directly in startups? Uh, tell us more uh, about that. Okay, I think that every founder that says that doesn't look for other investors, it's a liar. <laughs> so I'm not a liar, so I will tell you the truth. Yes, we always look for new investors. We have our own network of investors until uh, <clears throat> 2021, at the, the end of 2021, we relied on you know Business Angel that we uh, were in contact with to found our own startups. And all the free startups that we launched were founded at least um, we have one that right now it's with this round, we will be at 3 million funding, uh, which is not that much, but in Italy, it's still good. And um, the other one that we bootstrap that it's going pretty well because um, uh, right now it's going to be um, for this year, 2022, 400 uh, K, um, annual recurring revenues because it's making 35 uh, approximately per month. Uh, it has been affected from the pandemic because otherwise we will doing this in 2020 because it was a food delivery uh, for uh, um, kind of a cloud canteen, but for B2B, mm -hmm. small businesses that cannot afford to have a canteen mm -hmm. in their own facility. <clears throat> it was definitely not digital, but we were still trying, you know, what we were at the beginning. So we were still 
not sure where to focus on. Fortunately, went pretty well. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so, yes, we founded with Business Angel, but right now we launched um, our own, let's say um, it's, it's an investment holding. It's not a fund. Mm -hmm. So it's an investment holding because of the dimension is only 10 million. Uh, <clears throat> we are going to raise 10 million. In the first two months, we raised two months and almost three. We raised 1.5 million. We are going to, uh, by the end of 22, we will raise 10 million. And this will fund either the studio as the dual entity model uh, does and the startups. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the ratio is to, let's say that you fund a very prolific founder, which will deliver 15 startups already with a product market fit very, for a very good price because of this 10 million, 3 million goes into the studio in three years. So you get 15 startups pre-ordered with a product market fit, which is pretty amazing for 200K, <laughs> very rich. And then you have the chance, first right of refusal to follow up in each startup. Okay. So it's something that investors like. So you, you, and, you uh, let your investor, you know, the a decision point you know to to follow up with uh, your with different startups this is good because they you 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 know they they can choose and very it's very important the human based uh, thing it's actually it's actually different it's they invest in eh1 which is our holding and then eh1 invests in amazon and in startups but it's not their own decision so it's more like a fund in terms of how you manage it but they love it because we have all the information on a startup. So it's like, you know, it's like usually when a startup comes to you and present you, we're doing this and that, if he or she is a good seller, then sometimes you buy it, okay? Yeah, yeah the, the market sounds good. The trend is pretty topic. Um, the CEO is charismatic. Yeah, exactly. So, but if we are insiders, so we have six months of these startups, which is product market fit, yes. But mm -hmm. if we do a follow up, we want to be sure that we are investing in the right one. Mm -hmm. So, of the 15 that we uh, create with the studio, only 10 are going to be followed up by EH1, which is our uh, holding. So, it's a form of a warranty for the investor. Uh, sorry? It's a form of uh, warranty for the investor. Like yeah, a... they, because they have the first right of refusal with the fund, with the with each one. So they, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> and they, they have the diversification also directly. Yeah, it's a form that it's used by best studios like Science, like uh, M13, like Atomic. They use this model. Yeah, and your investors are, uh, what percentage are Italian? What percentage uh, are? <laughs> At this moment, we have Italian investors, of but course. we are dealing also with some US investors, but we are looking for, we want people to, to join uh, from outside of Italy, because right now Italy, it's like, uh, uh, was like two years ago that France launched the four four billion government uh, for startups, right? Maybe <laughs> something like that. Yeah. And anyway, I think Italy right now it's in a good moment. It's blooming. It's small. So right now, for investors that comes outside from Italy, it's going to like going to a convenience store and buying for small price good startups. But no, <laughs> no. Northern Italia have a fantastic strength, such as uh, uh, we are very strong in design. We have fantastic SME in design. Uh, uh, so you have this this, this um, sense of design that nobody has has in the in the world combined to engineering. You know, to to. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you something about the, the the competition of you know the big American startups because f to compare with France, France is very permissive. 
to uh, the product and service that the big American company uh, launched and made the world. And we are the first one to open, open our arms to them. We have Uber, we have Zoom, we have everything here in America. But what I know, maybe it's a mistake, you will correct me. Uh, Italy is, is a little bit more conservative, you know, uh, uh, again, do you have Uber, for example? Because I know, for example, um, um, what is the, the brand of coffee, a very famous? Um, Starbucks. Starbucks never, never, uh, um, how can I say, become successful in Italy because you are so much attached to your traditional coffee, etc. But here in France, you know, we have Starbucks everywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, uh, Uber was, was a different story. Actually, I wrote an article at the time on, because one of my friends was a manager of Uber and the other one was a country manager of U U Uber Italy. And <clears throat> um, I think that the main thing why Uber didn't work, I mean, Uber Pop didn't work in Italy was the reason because we have a very big lobby of taxi driver we have also a big lobby in taxi in taxi in france but the, the uber they were super strong <laughs> uber one in france yeah yeah okay but uh, i don't think that italy is not not permissive a lot of a lot of startup that comes from america come here as well um <clears throat> i think either i don't think you know that you know, i you know every country has his own strength Italy is good in some areas, France is good in, in, in some other areas, and other countries are, I think that in terms of ecosystem right now, you know, it, it depends on what kind of investors are you, okay? And investors who loves to be, you know, on top of things, so a nearly adopter, let's say, or a high, someone that want to, do some high risk bet. Italy right now is it's a good place because still, you know, investments is raising, but it's so there are some signs that will grow, but it's not, you know, still a path, it's not designed. And um, so if you do just some small step, maybe you put your first foot on the door in the door. Then you can get some some <clears throat> good, uh, you know. It's like, oh, let me give you an example. We have one startup in our portfolio, which is doing pretty much the same thing of a startup that stays in Germany, but it's doing better, definitely better. I mean, they are losing like 40k. I ca I cannot do, give you the name because it's pretty confidential because we are talking with some of these uh, these guys but let's say they're losing a lot of money monthly that we are not losing we are pretty much break even <clears throat> and our p money is like five times less so the startup is doing the same thing better in another country so and but if you go there and buy that it's five times the, the price of buying some stakes in our in our <laughs> of course it's because of the ecosystem but if you invest your money wisely, then you can get a bigger multiple. It, it really depends, but it's risky. Of course, as any new ecosystem is risky. It's like when you do emerging markets in, uh, you know, when you do some stay, stakes in, in the normal, normal market and you get some stakes in emerging markets, it's riskier. Mm, absolutely. It really depends. I don't know if I answered your question. Maybe yeah, not. sure, sure, because... Uh... <laughs> Uh, in fact, my question about the big, big American company was uh, also a good point for Italia. You know, if you are more resistant to them, it means that you can you can create things that can compete at the European level uh, because you are not you know submerged by them. You know, you have uh, you have the opportunity to build things. Uh, um, I, I don't know. I I do not believe in uh, being conservative. I believe in being open mm -hmm. and be better. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll go on, go on, go on, please. Uh, no, did you face some challenges maybe uh, in starting the studio? What kind of uh, uh, anecdotes you have, like funny anecdotes or interesting anecdotes about the founder or the startup or, or the creation of the studio? 
Well, I have a lot. I, I would try to, to put some. Well, we <clears throat> we've been contacted by a lot of corporates, for for example, in the beginning, big corporates, to make startup as a service for them. So you know, we were intrigued by this. You know, a lot of money coming in, and seems super simple. So we're saying yes, yes, and we were going through a lot of calls after realizing that the sales cycle was really long. And beside that, we have a small team. Either we are good at building startups by, for our own or building startups for others. So we have to choose a path. We cannot do things, which is pretty obvious. You know, looking backwards is pretty obvious, but we were so stupid to pursue that and, and trying to, you know, to do all, both things. And we were doing pretty badly. And so we decided to stop. Uh, so we, I show you, let me, it's easier. It's in Italian, but it's, it's funny as well. Can I share the screen? Of course, yes, yes, yes. Okay, just give me a sec. You have the right. Okay. You see? Yes. So we yeah. said, uh, the, um, I say, um, if you do things fast, you do it bad, something like that. So we said, lo startup studio frettoloso fai figli consulenti. So we said that we did decided not to build startup for companies, but to do it for just for us, for ourselves, because we can get more money from that. So we did we did this this uh, mistake, and um, also at the beginning, a lot of founders was were writing us and still writing to us. Please build my own startup. And the more we go on, the better is. I mean, for example, just a few days ago, a startup was making 600K in revenues, brought us, we need your help. We want to give you, we will give you 30%, but just come in. But, you know, this is just, you know, I think that the more you become solid, the more the opportunities out there become intriguing. It's like the devil. Mm -hmm. So it's like, hey, come here. I have a lot of money. Don't you want that? And but really, um, we have to be good at what we do. So also working with founders outside. Yes, it seems easier, but then you have to go through a negotiation to see. Then you don't know how they work. You don't pursue a model, so you cannot come with a repeatable results and we want to get results that are that are you know that we can do it over and over repeatable. because we are a studio yeah repeatable process yeah so the founder the founder you call out from outside they don't come with the idea so we i think we understand it but uh, at what moment they can join and become i don't know the, the co-founder say you and because you need you need a staff for your startup spin-off for startup to, to run them and operate them so how does it work so usually when we uh, reach the point that we have clients that are uh, <clears throat> either writing checks, I mean, checks by, you know, either paying for the product or waiting for the product to, to start. So they subscribe, says, okay, I want a product. Okay, and we, I don't know, answer them, okay, in two months. <clears throat> and we are building the MVP. Usually building an MVP for us takes like, from a week to two. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but because we just, uh, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's between prototyping and prototyping. Yes, you use the no-code. When we build it. You use the, the no-code yeah. apps, okay. Hmm. Yeah, so we use bubble.io, Integromat and so on. So we just try to build the less, I mean, very, very super, super simple. And in this moment, we usually go out there and says, okay, we are building this startup, this is the pre-validated product. Our team, they will have our team for the first, until the seed round, our team will be fully focused on that startup. And then we search for someone that has experience either in VC or has, I don't know, launched and failed a startup. We love it. And, uh, or has worked, like, I don't know, Bain or any other consultancy firm which they are loaded with like 14, 16 hours work per day. So they are pretty, you know, um, 
used to work in, in a fast growing environment. So we look for this kind of people, then we tell them which are the terms, uh, how much stakes we give them, that we give them a salary, we give them a team, oh, okay. there's EH1. So we give them a lot of things and we give them the majority mm. of the startups. We usually give them up to 70% of the, of the stakes of the startup. Wow. Because and they have to- And this is- uh, uh, all in the game, skin in the game. And this is at the moment they join or do you, there is some reversal, you know, uh, uh, um, because you can, for example, give them 10% and then give them more and more year after year. But at the, uh, yeah, you, I think I, uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, no. I just was saying that uh, you, you give them the majority at the, at the, at the, at the legal incorporation, right? Uh, yeah. Wow. And we have reverse fasting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is, you know, <clears throat> they take it all, but they have to stay. Either there is a time vesting. So they have it from day one mm -hmm. because, you know, vesting it, it's, you know, I think it's sentimentally, it's different. You know, you have it mm -hmm. day one. Very smart. <laughs> you have to stay. It's usually five years vesting, but there is triggers. I mean, you do super good. You you can also vest it one year. Mm. I don't know. You go through Series A and Series B in 12, 24 months. It's done. It's yours. <laughs> I mean, you did it. Mm. At least also because what happens? Because in that stage, if the founders leave, you can find a manager. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But... So there is either time and triggers. Mm. So it really depends. Triggers wins over time. We prefer results over time. Mm. Great. So OKR, objective key results always. I love it. I love it because uh, it's very, for example, in France, uh, we have, you know, deep tech startup spin our university and we have a very uh, problem, you know, to find CEO for these startups. Because the PhD or, or the postdoc, you know, they, they, they fly, fly they fly to United States to pursue academic career, but we don't have anyone to to you know to to drive the startups. And uh, I, this model is very interesting because uh, you, it's very attractive, and someone can join and be very motivated to to drive this, the 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 whole things. Yeah, it's it's good, you know. Once you have a product, because uh, if you look for professional founders, people with 35, 40, you know, before leaving their job, it's not that you have to pay them their salary because people which are we are hiring, and uh, they have to work. Force is not the hire. It's like really, it's hey, it's a marriage. Mm. <laughs> and second thing is we'll not pay them the, their salary because there's people we have that have over 200, 300K salary per year says, okay, we cover. I mean, you don't have to do two works. So it's not like starting by uh, yourself. So not no salary, no team, nothing, no network. You have to do everything from zero. Mm -hmm. So for a professional founder, someone that has entrepreneurial um, instinct, but has, it's in a different uh, stage of his or her life, studio, it's a good choice. Could be a good choice. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm convinced of that. Uh, Howard, maybe you have some uh, some question about uh, you know because uh, you, you talk about the TEDx of uh, of Farad about uh, with me and you were very curious about the TEDx, uh, right? Yes, uh, in your TEDx you share some valuable and personal experiences with uh, one of your first customers about value before anything else, and that your job about responsibilities. When you say something, you need to deliver, even over deliver. So I think the startup, the founder who, who join you, will be very uh, interested by by that uh, part of your of your pitch, and by uh, the commitment you put in in everything. I think I'm sure you're you're driven by results. So I'm sure if uh, a founder join you, uh, it should be successful. You should be all successful together with the investors. I was curious to know if this TEDx brings you anything. 
I, I don't know. They, actually, I was pretty reluctant to do that TEDx. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, there was this girl, and I was about to, to drop because I, I don't know. Uh, I was not sure about giving that speech and uh, and was really I was super embarrassed I remember because if you watched it you will see that I'm really <laughs> uh, I was really uh, moved and was really hard for me uh, it was a good experience but was a good experience at last because it um, it gave me the opportunity to share what I learned and also, you know, to put it in place because, you know, until you think about it, all of these things that happen to you, uh, it's, it's difficult to also, I teach, uh, I, I was teaching before in the master of marketing, uh, in the YED, uh, um, in, in Italy. And, uh, you know, I always love, because when I teach to, to people or when I give a speech, it's, I always tell it's, I'm learning from you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not because I'm, you know, I'm receiving, but I don't know what, uh, I, uh, I'm not sure I understood your, your question, Harold. What, what, what you meant by saying that, what it gives? No, the last, the last question was, uh, I, I wonder if it brings you contact, network, uh, if people reach, reach out after that. Um, it's the first time I think <laughs> the, the that you time? tell me that that you tell me that you know oh we watch your TED. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I think that's uh, yeah. Some people maybe, but they didn't told me. I mean, so I'm not sure. But it was super good because it's um, a very good feeling. I mean, giving a, a TEDx speech was amazing. For uh, there were 400 people. <laughs> And it was super, super hard. And, um, but it was really good. And but a TEDx so is like a, a visit card, you know? So if, if somebody really? wants to- Really? Yeah, to me. So if, if someone is looking for you on, on Google and find the TEDx, he will know you in, in, some, in some ways. So- Very important for your personal branding. And yeah. By the way, what you what you say during during the aesthetics is important because Howard talk about your, uh, the, you know the the, um, the absolute responsibility that you need yeah. to take, and this is um, this is something that we can see on your uh, infographics, you know, on your on your website uh, with the samurai culture. Can you talk about this for a little bit? Because uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, very, it's very bold, you know, uh, as a culture, as a corporate culture. Well, you know, I'm I always um i'm really a fan of the samurai culture i read like the the bushido uh many times i read the hagakure which is a uh, a book wrote by um, right from um, on the life of one of the last uh, samurais living samurais by uh yume, yume moto tsunatomo something i i'm sorry i don't remember the writer name um but um yeah it's something i i don't know that i always had yamamoto tsunetomo and that i um, always had and i kind of um, transferred it to the people that that works with me and it's something that i really believe in it's um i don't know i think that being rigorous and uh, being very um, uh, specific about what you have to achieve, it's a way of actually achieving. I don't know, there was also friends of mine who once told me, oh, why don't we go to Portugal? It was the first time I went to Portugal. And uh, says, yes, yes, we can think, let's see how it's going uh, in the semester and then we decide. He told me, no, we will never go, gonna go if you say like that. Let's buy the tickets. So we have to. Mm. So I really believe in buying the tickets. So if you buy the tickets, and, and it's because of that that I always force myself. When I put the target, I always say, it's okay, let's go and tell it to everyone. Mm. So I have to take responsibility for it. Yeah, it's very and so, 
yes, you fail. You will fail and I will fail and it's okay. But it's, but also by saying this and by doing this, you will fail less. <laughs> I fail less because it's, you know, it's, it's my own reputation. So I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> so I will do everything I can to to because you have so I yeah you have the 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 seppuku you know as a as an ultimate uh... exactly exactly <laughs> because if you don't reach your target then you have to you know then you have to admit your defeat and it's like a seppuku for me at least <laughs> I don't like to. Um, I don't like to fail others. Mm. Um, and I really feel the responsibility for our, for my team and for the people that I have uh, and that I'm promising that we are a good studio. I mean, they're, they're believing me. Mm. And uh, so I think that uh, they believe in me, they believe in the process and they believe in the team. So it's my responsibility to do whatever I can to reach the target because I promised investors. And I really think, you know, that every, usually for a startup, you know, getting investors on board, it's like, yeah, I get money. For me, it's like, hey, there's another one who's relying on me and who's believing me and I have to make them proud. Mm. Um, and um, I think this is the way to the right way to feel about an investment. It's like, hey, okay, I believe in you. I'm putting my trust on you. With, I mean, with all the risk involved, it's, it's, we all know it's risky, but it says, okay, I'm believing in you instead of someone else. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. <laughs> very, very, very. So we talk about so the culture uh, you like to implement in, in, in Mamazen and Transmit it to all your teams, and this is fantastic. How maybe we can conclude now with uh, with Farhad? Um, what do you think? Do you have uh, something to add? Yeah, um, let's project in the future. Do you know what will be the next step for you for your startup studio, uh, or is it too early? Maybe you prefer to focus on the present. I think as your as the driver, it's uh, the moment to count. But uh, did you plan for the future something? Yeah, yeah, yes, I definitely prefer to focus on the present, but yeah, we have, big, I mean, my goal is to make these things work perfectly, so we know that we can deliver results, and we will make the exit, so as we start to deliver exits, and then as I see that this is going, so it's working pretty much without me, so I don't like to be, you know, the, uh, like the Chief. Deus Ex Machina, we, yeah. I like to put a process that works without me. I don't want people to say, okay, oh, it's Farhad. It's not the singer, it's the team. It's, it's the whole group that works. It's not Farhad, it's the process. It's what we do. So once I did this, well, I wanted to implement a way to give this kind of an open source to more startups. So to make this process scalable for other startups. This will be my main goal. So I think that after I, after the studio will become successful, then I can start another venture inside the studio to make it open to more people, I hope. Uh, how, how mechanical, a mechanical engineer, maybe, <laughs> in hardware. <laughs> finally. <laughs> And finally, uh, your, your father will say, now I understand what you do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how many startups spin up do you have uh, launched since the since uh, the, the creation of Amazon? Okay, very very few because we um, we funded with our own money, mm -hmm. me and my the other co-founder, which was as well as a shareholder of the previous startup. So till 2021, except for some investors, which are mainly people that we worked with, with uh, in previous company like Bakeka which I'm pretty, pretty proud of because when you, when people that worked with you like, like 10 years ago still believe in you, it's something that, it means that you left a good trace. Mm -hmm. um, and also a lot of people that are working with me now worked with me in previous companies. Mm -hmm. So this is for me is 
even better because mm -hmm. it means that they join you yes mm -hmm. yeah they, they join me in new adventures and uh, um, so um, um, right now um, so, sorry I, I lost the question because I, yeah, I, I too many too the many number, the number of stuff the, 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 okay so speed. so we, we launched free we launched free right now we're launching the fourth one and uh, then we will after we finished uh, um, pouring the fuel in in the eh one we will grow in up in the team and in five years we will launch 15 startups we already launched three and the four it's pretty much out there mm -hmm. so 11 more to go and then it's finished this okay. period for us is finished so we will open again if we manage and we will manage to succeed uh, this four batch Okay. So our goal is to create 15 startups and exit five. Mm. Okay, great. So you, you can say that now one of your target and your goal is to raise the 10 million, right? You are definitely 1.5. So it's a call for uh, investors. Yeah, yeah, would love to always. I'm yeah. always open to investors, people <laughs> that share the same vision. So you talked about a book also, maybe you have a movie or a podcast so to what inspired you, inspired you when you were young or now? Oh, well, uh, well, Haga Kure, this book, yeah. I really love it. it. It's really, I read it every year and every year is changing. It's, it's, it's the way of the samurai. Mm. There is also uh, we'll put a link the name on the book. Yeah. Yeah, I can give it you. I can give you yeah, the later, link. later. Don't worry, we will put that on. Okay. The... And there is uh, uh, Viaggio a Ixland. Uh, so it's, I think it's trip to Ixland from Carlos Castaneda. But I will uh, share. I, I'm not sure about the, the English, the name of the book, but I will share it. And movie. Well, there's a lot of movie that I love. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> well, I, I will. Uh, I mean, yeah, but. Uh, I have one person that inspired me more than movie, which was uh, Paolo Jaimonat, the founder of Bakeka.it, which was uh, pretty much involved in making me become a good manager. And, uh, but I mean, uh, he left uh, this uh, uh, there before, before, but I'm, I'm sure that he will be uh, proud. Okay. So it, it wasn't the guy with the carpet. No, it's it's another person. Sorry, it wasn't your, your customer with the carpet. It's it's another person, right? <laughs> no, no, this was uh, no, no, this was Paolo J. Monat, uh, which was the founder of Bakeka.it. Okay, which we'll is someone uh, really. Yeah, we feel your emotion. Really me a lot. <laughs> we feel your emotion, so it's good. Thank you to share that with us. We will check on him. Okay. Okay. I think it's and, a good ending uh, for that. Huh? It's a perfect ending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It's funny because, I'm sorry. It's funny because you are talking with you are our that uh, Persian, we Persian, we are carpet seller since since the, 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 the end. Oh, the, the beginning. Of yeah, he was. <laughs> so this guy was uh, was uh, actually I think he was Af uh, from Afghanistan. He was. The, the CEO of ABC company, uh, he that I, I remember he pretty much shocked me with these things. Oh, it's all about value. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a good lesson. It was a good lesson, and uh, and it was pretty unexpected <laughs> because I was you know there. Oh, I have this this this. And it's no, no, no. What is amazing with these guys, with this old guy, uh, is that you know they, they they have this sense of marketing that people learn in school, and you know you you, you read Seth Godin and this guru, but these guys have have it in their blood, you know. Yeah. They told you it's all about value, and the guy was just a carpet seller. You know, this is amazing. I, I love it. Yeah. yeah, I really I really loved it. Yeah. So thank you very much, Farah. It was a great pleasure to thank have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Farah. Bye-bye.